there was a really loud bang. I didn't realise what it was. And a lady come running up to me and say, it's your daughter, she's had a car accident. So I run up to the actual car. My daughter was in the well of the car where the vehicle hit her that hard. It actually broke the safety belt. I honestly thought, I thought my daughter was dead actually. Ambulance service, patient breathing. I'm going to phone through about a big accident in London. How many people in total are the speaker? There are three. The car really bad There's a baby in the car. Looking and connecting multiple requests for ambulance, police. We had five calls in total. The one call said that there's an off duty nurse at the job holding a one year old airway open. As soon as I saw those notes, we got the aircraft assigned straight away. Given that it was a fairly major road, whatever injuries had been sustained at the time were probably going to be significant, if not life-threatening. When you get to a scene where there's multiple different ages of patients, it makes the dynamic incredibly difficult. When we arrived, there was our aircraft from Cosford that had a doctor on board. So I quickly got headed in the direction of my particular patient, which was Ava. I'm a dad myself, so to go to a child is obviously quite distressing for people that are on scene as well as us as a crew. These scenes are always intense and there are times at which you can't help but to feel the kind of emotions that go alongside these. You have to clear your mind and sort of get down to the business end of treating these kids. The team that I was part of was to be looking after Lucas who was deteriorating at the time. He needed an anaesthetic to be able to manage his breathing and to allow us to manage the other injuries that he had. When I assessed Ava, I could quickly see that she was very poorly. So we needed to get out of there. We needed to get her to definitive care early. Getting the patient to just the closest hospital isn't always the best option. In Lucas's case, we wanted to get him to a, a paediatric major trauma centre. So that would be the Birmingham Children's Hospital. That drive, on a Sunday is easily an 80 to 90 minute drive. By air, that could well be 15, 20, 25 minutes, so significantly quicker. You know how serious it is when you talk to doctors and nurses, passing them details, and you can hear the reactions in their voices. We've given them an injury pattern. They have a relative understanding of what's happened on scene, and then they can say, potentially, these are the specialities that are required early. Next thing I remember is waking up, um, Dad's at the side of my bed, my brother's at the bottom of my bed, Dad's shouting, and the nurses all come running in, and then I hear her say, it's okay Cliff, she's waking up. It wasn't until a few days after I'd come round and I was put up onto the ward that I was told that the children were very, very poorly. When I walked in, obviously both of them were on life support machines, and it it sounds really stupid, but I started to cry because you you look alone and you, you know it's Ava, but at the same time it's not your daughter. That was when I realised what they said about Lucas was true. He was laying in bed, he couldn't lift his head, he couldn't talk, he couldn't utter anything. In that kind of depth, it was quite scary to look at him. As soon as you're told there's a brain injury, you know it's not just going to be weeks, months, years. And you think to yourself, how's it, how's it going to get any better? When I went back and saw them again, Lucas, it's like a miracle, he was actually sat up in bed and he's like, hi mum, he knew straight away who I was. You could see the old Lucas coming back. He was starting to sit up, starting to try and talk. 
pretty much instantly you could start seeing he, he wanted to fight, he wanted to try. I think it was September, October 2015, we find out that I was expecting Alfie, who was born in April, and it's just been like a miracle because we can go out and do things together, not missing one of us, we are all still here. Yeah, the kids have done a lot for the fundraising, doing the Birmingham Fun Run, schools helped out with doing non-school uniform days. They had to go dressed as Ambition's Day to School and Lucas actually went as an air ambulance paramedic and that's why he'll say now that air ambulance people, they're my superheroes. It's always a nice feeling to know that you've done some good in a case and that really makes you realise that it's worth doing the job and doing the job well. It's lovely to see somebody who you've seen at their worst and then to see them at their best. I think it helps with the healing process too. It's been really nice to hear how the whole family is doing following what was quite a traumatic incident and how they'd made very, very good recoveries. Things like that really make the job worthwhile. They're, they're just incredible at what they do. They really are. It's, they are, in my eyes, what's between life and death. My dad's words were, if the Midlands Air Ambulance weren't there, you wouldn't have your children now. So obviously, very, very, very grateful to them for being there and looking after the kids when they did. The Midlands Air Ambulance, it's just amazing. They're everything they do. I, I love them. I really do.